One of the things that I sometimes like to think about is the role of God in our lives. You know, yes, many of us believe that God created us and put us here on this earth for a reason, to experience this life in some sort of way that will make us realize our true selves, our true purpose, our true reason for being here, and our true home and destination. But if we take a moment and really dissect that further, what is God really doing this whole time that we're living? Is he out there just sitting, sitting back and enjoying and watching the world go by? Is he actively involved in moving all, all the strings together, bringing people together, bringing events and situations and trials and tribulations and successes and joys? I bring up this question not so that we can get lost into the rabbit hole of trying to imagine what God is like or what God is doing, because I think candidly, I think those sort of intellectual exercises are ultimately futile. Rather, I bring up this question to help us realize that God is no distant bystander. God is here. God is everywhere. God is in every moment. You know, when I was younger, there was a quote that I heard that really resonated with me. I'm not sure if it was Wayne Dyer or someone else who said it, but it went something like this. You know, God's radio is always on, but it's up to us to turn into the right frequency. Right, if, if God's channel is broadcasting at 101.3, for example, I don't know what channel that is, but let's just say that he's broadcasting his message and his signs and his signals at that frequency. But we happen to be on 99.5. That we're not really dialed into the right frequency to hear the message, to experience God, to connect with him, to really be of service for him. And throughout life, we may turn that knob left and right we may go to different frequencies. We may go up to 105. We may come down to 92. And for those of you who are younger and, and you know, probably are not used to, to the radio in and, and, and the way that maybe some of us have, have grown up, um, just know that there's so many different frequencies. Just like there are so many different frequencies for living our life. Some of us occupy higher bands of frequency. We always resonate and emit positive energy. We have this light and peaceful aura that is exuding, that is effortless. Some of us may occupy lower states of frequency. We might always easily be angry, always be unhappy. And the rest of us, or should I say all of us, really occupy everywhere in between. There's moments where we feel high, moments where we feel low, moments where we're all over the place. But I'm not just talking about temporary states. I'm talking about actual states. I'm talking about actually ascending to higher levels of consciousness to ultimately click into that right frequency or that right wave, that right band or spectrum through which one can truly experience God and all his glory, not just on an intellectual level, but on a deep, personal, spiritual, and interpersonal, inter, you know, I can't figure out what the right word is, but really on a, on such an intimate level that there's no longer a feeling of me and God, there's just pure silence, pure emptiness. And what, what has really happened is the soul has merged into the light of God, 
or the presence of God. You know, that's, that's really what's going on here. When we go back to the start of this video and the question I posed at the beginning of, you know, what is God's role in our lives? I truly believe that's the, that this is that. Yes, I believe that God is actively involved and is with us every step of the way. And believe me, I've, I've experienced that so much, especially in the last few months where there's been so many major life changes. And to me as a person, not as a spirit, but to me as a person who is thinking with a human mind, there is just no way on earth that any person, least of all myself, could put all of those things together so perfectly. Only God can truly do that. So yes, I, I do believe that there is an active role but I also believe there is a passive role. And by passive, I don't mean that God sits on his hands figuratively, right? I'm not saying God has hands, but I'm not saying that he's just sitting idly by. What I mean when I say a passive state is that in addition to creation, to the act of creating, in addition to the act of being involved in every single little detail that is happening, there is also an element of God waiting. And this might sound unusual um, to some of us because when you think about it, God is perfect. God is complete. God is self-sustaining. So therefore, God does not need to wait for anything. In fact, God supersedes all forms of time. And therefore, if God is time or supersedes time, then there's really not even the notion of waiting at all, right? So I agree that when, when it comes to trying to analyze this on, a, on an intellectual level, uh, words and language and concepts fall incredibly short. But at the same time, what I'm really trying to get across here is that there is also a part of God that is seeing and watching that is there behind the scenes, there, you know, like only a breath away, right? But watching, waiting, seeing how we progress, seeing how we develop, seeing if we're ultimately paying attention to the signs and coming closer to him. Right, because after everything that we do, there is still an element of us having to make a choice. That is what life is about, choices. Sometimes it's between two, sometimes it's between multiple. But at the end of the day, it can all be boiled down to a series of choices. From what time we go to bed to how we structure our day, to who we associate with and spend time with. All of life can be boiled down to choices. And God is observing those choices. And each choice, as we all know very well, but maybe sometimes forget, has its own consequences. You know, we may not believe necessarily in a heaven or in a hell or an afterlife, and I'm not one to judge or instruct, you know, any of us to, to believe or not believe. But I will say that there is a form of heaven and hell on earth too. There is a form of suffering as a result of poor decisions. But there is also a form of joy and bliss as a result of good decisions. And you may be saying to me, well, Najim, you're just falling into the duality trap of good and bad and, and good and evil and things like that. You know, what happened to the, the notion of oneness? What happened to non-duality? And I hear you. I'm not, I'm not questioning that for one bit. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, uh, you know, the, that the role is, is actually two when in reality it's, it's one. But 
you see, this is why it makes this discussion so so difficult, but also so interesting, because there's so many paradoxes that don't make sense at first glance, but upon deeper investigation uh, and and you know research and analysis and introspection, one discovers that they can actually coexist. So I mentioned earlier that we have choices, but at the same time, I also believe that a lot of things are already predetermined. A lot of things. So how how do those two jive together? How does predestination correlate or reconcile with free will? And I think I mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I believe there's a world, we live in a world where both can exist, where we have free will, or at least in our minds, we have free will, but kind of overlaying all of this is what is the ultimate will? What is the divine will? And we won't know what that is as long as we occupy this physical plane. All we can do, all anyone can do really, is live to the best of our abilities. And I feel like through some way that escapes my understanding and perhaps anyone else's understanding, that is really how we can reconcile free will and fate, how we can bring those two together. But the whole reason that I'm bringing all of this up is that, yes, it's important to understand and to think about the ways that God is involved, but at the same time, too, it's not that God is op operating in a vacuum, right? The point of connection between all of us, the single node that connects all of us, is not our bodies, is not our humanity, it's not that we're sharing this one earth together. It's that we all came from the same source. Not from the same mothers, but from the same source. From the same field of creation. And we all share that sort of common journey. We're like that caravan that, that Rumi talks about, right? The caravan through the desert. We each have our own camels. We each have, you know, but there's a camel herder up front. And this camel herder is, is leading the caravan in a direction. And that camel herder for us is, is God, right? God is the one that is leading us into a direction. For, the, for those of us that want to follow, for those of us that want to explore and be a part of that journey. So it's not so much of, let's just try to understand how God works, but it's also a matter of, let's try to understand how we work and how we're supposed to work. Because when you realize that there is a part of God that is also waiting, that is also watching, that should hopefully inspire you and make you realize that it's not just you wanting to, to progress, or it's not just God wanting you to progress, it's also you wanting you to progress. And somewhere in the middle, that happens, right? You know, there's a phrase that I used to hear um, when I was a kid. Uh, it's a phrase that I still think about a lot today, but it goes something like this, that when you walk towards God, God runs towards, runs toward you. Right. When you walk, think about this. When you walk, God will run. So you just need to take one step and God will take a hundred steps toward you. That's, that's the whole beauty of this relationship, right? It's not this relationship where we're just created and then we're abandoned and we're left to figure it out on our own. No, we're created, but at the same time too, God is holding our hands. God is, is gently nudging us, not in a way that we feel constrained and that we don't feel like we're actually doing anything and that we're just going through the motions, but in a way that if there's any time that we need something to get us through that difficult moment or that difficult chapter, well, God is the first one to, to help us with that. Yes, it might be our family. Yes, it might be our friends. Yes, it might be you know, whomever that we can turn to. But first and foremost, it is God. It is, it is God that is instructing you and guiding you, and 
pulling you along and pushing you along. So that's really what I want us to focus on. Not so much the technicalities or the intellectual arguments about, you know, how God exists, you know, all of that stuff. That's fine. But the reason I bring all that up to begin with is to really to help us see that there is ultimately a connection. And that connection, just like any other connection we have, can be strengthened or weakened. The more it's ignored, the more it's unused, the more it will falter, right? Think about if you have a friend and you never check up on them and you never give them a call and, you know, they start feeling a certain way, they might not give you a call. And pretty soon you notice that you two drift apart and that connection is not as strong anymore. And eventually you might get to a point where you might not even remember them anymore, or you might only remember them on certain occasions. And the two of you have effectively moved on. The difference with God, however, is that God doesn't move on. Even if you spend your entire life in oblivion, totally unaware, totally benighted, totally removed from all that is pure and whole and joyful in this world, God is still there. God doesn't turn his back on anyone. In fact, God is right there for you to take that first step. Not to complete the journey, but to just take that first step. And to give yourself the confidence that you, in fact, can be forgiven. That you, in fact, you know, forgiven is not the right word. I don't want to make this seem like we're operating in sin or we're getting deeds. It's much deeper than that. What I'm trying to say is that God is always there. God is, is here God is everywhere, as I mentioned. God is with us every second of our lives, no matter who we are, no matter where we are. So I think that's really what, what I want to kind of leave you with here, is that as intricate and as complex as our lives may be, as intricate and as complex as the world and the universe may be, there's really certain simple truths that are hard to forget and hard to ignore. And one of them being that we live in a beautiful, harmonious relationship with our creator. And even though the umbilical cord was cut at birth, there is still a tiny invisible line connecting us with him that truthfully can never be severed. It can get smaller, it can get thinner, it can get longer, and we may find ourselves drifting away from the core, from the center, but it can never be cut unless we ourselves are the ones to cut it. So find that cord, find that link that is connecting you. And instead of letting it grow longer and longer, Cut the distance. Cut the distance till you're no longer holding on to the cord, but you're actually holding on what the cord is attached to. You're holding on to the presence of God. You're in the radius and the aura of God. This is what life is all ultimately about. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it got you thinking in couple of different directions, but ultimately going beyond thinking, I hope it made you feel a certain way, a sense of peace, a sense of equanimity, a sense of comfort knowing that God is there. And if it did, or maybe if it didn't, uh, please share your thoughts in, in the comments below. I certainly would love us to start some sort of a dialogue here to get to understand each of our own different journeys and perspectives. Because I really do think that there is something that we can all learn from one another. There is so much that we can um, develop on uh, just by listening to someone else's story. So please don't be shy. Drop a comment, even if it is just your thoughts on this video. And let me know what you think. Uh, don't also forget to subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Um, make sure to drop that like and share it with your friends and all the other good stuff that, that helps with uh, the algorithm and circulating this video to more and more viewers who might enjoy it, such as yourself. Um, but with that, 
I really do appreciate the time. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you will always remember that God is here. God is everywhere. God is in every moment.